Hi, welcome to a really quick how-to for ForeFlight. So I've downloaded the ForeFlight app. I found it really intuitive to use. I'm sure you will too. I'm just going to run through some basic features on it. This is the free version. I think it's incredible how much you get for free. And um, so let's jump into it and have a look at it. You, when you first load it up, this is what you will see. It's kind of on a dark mode for the for the map, which um, looks quite nice. But I actually prefer different modes. If we zoom out a bit, it actually overlays the rainfall, which I think is like really useful and really clever. Um, if we zoom back in, in fact, you can zoom in and out with the arrows here. So let's have a look at changing the map up because I actually find it a bit more useful to change the map. So if we go into settings we have the map theme. I'm on dark. If I change it to classic, it's kind of the same. Um, however, it's just more of a brown color. <laughs> um, let's go to light, because I actually prefer the light mode. And again, sort of the same, just lightened it up. Slightly different shades. Now what's really handy is if we go to the, to the, um, the top left menu here, and there's two more things that we can do. We can change it to street map, which is my personal uh, favorite choice. And you, you get the towns and the villages and the, and the streets and things on it. So I think that's really useful. Um, and that's my preferred option. And then you can also go to the aerial map as well. And that's gonna show you sort of a, a Google Earth type um, download. So you can actually see the airfield and things like that. So that's really useful to use as well. Personally, in flight, I prefer the street map. That's my preferred. So um, that's how you can change up the map and make it look a bit different. Another thing um, about the light and dark mode is these information boxes here. I've got white background. If I change that to dark with the street map view, um, what it's going to do is just change those to, to a darker background. So if that's your preference, that's how you can change that. Let's go to light again. That's what I like. Come out to settings. Um, you get some ability to take off the overlays on the left hand side menu here. So you can take away the airfields and you can add on uh, more information such as the airways and things like that by clicking uh, these, these toggles. And uh, again, you can zoom in and out. This button here takes you straight to your flight plan, which we haven't set yet. So the flight plan, if we are looking at the, the top menu here, we've got the flight plan and this will show you the flight plan that you've got organized. Now there's a whole bunch of different ways that you can create a flight plan, which is why this app is so intuitive. There's always more than one way to do anything. Um, so just to start off, one way to, to perhaps do it is to type in the airfield of your choice. Now I am starting at um, EG04, so if you put in EG04, and then press enter, it's gonna add that to my flight plan. I want to fly into EG CJ, CJ, and then uh, enter, and then it's going to draw the flight plan for me. There we go. Now, another thing I can do is I can move the waypoint around, and then it's gonna pop up with the coordinates for that waypoint. So you just add that to the flight plan, and there we have it. Now, another way to do this, if I was to delete the airfield um, destination, if I zoom in and click on the airfield, I'll get a little information pane. And this has all the information in it that you would get under the airports tab at the bottom left here. Now, I'll come to that in a second, but right now what you can do is you can click add to route. That's another way that you can add your flight plan in there. Now you can close the flight plan up as such, or you can open it out. You can put in the nav log, so it will show you the, the different um, and waypoints in a list here at the top. So that's quite useful for flying. It tells you how many nautical miles it is between each one and estimated time of arrival or estimated time uh, to get there. It calculates that, your fuel burn and your overall estimated time of arrival and such things based on the profile of your aircraft. So if we go to, in fact, if we go to edit again, there, that is the aircraft that I've set up. You can add one in if you want, but if you could go to edit, you could put your tail number in, type of aircraft, um, you put in the airspeed units, you put in your default cruise altitude, you put in um, your fuel burn, you can put in your default cruising speed, and that's what it uses to 
base its uh, estimated time of arrival on. I believe it also pulls in the weather and wind information as well to give some information on that, but don't quote me on that. That's something that uh, I have to look into, but um, it is actually showing that there is wind at one knots. And the reason why I think that is because it pulls in a lot of wind information, which will come to under the airports. Now, another thing that you can do, which I think is really cool, is you can go to procedures. So some of the larger airports, um, it has the procedure information for them. So Sherbourne in Elmet, for example, has a procedure. So if I click that, it's going to bring up Sherbourne in Elmet. And then you click on the menu here and uh, choose your runway designation of choice and the procedure that you want to do. So we're going to do direct and it is going to draw out the procedure on a left hand circuit for us. Add that to route. Now be careful because I think usually some, well this airport in particular is usually doing a, a right hand circuit, not a left hand circuit. So it's interesting that the app has decided to put in a, a left hand circuit into here. Um, I'm not 100% sure if that's an official circuit for this airfield um, because I know that whenever I've been in there they've always asked for a right hand circuit. Uh, so always double check uh, this information it might not be accurate but it is a useful tool to um if if, if it is correct so uh, there we go we've got the procedure in and we could fly that and we could go okay i don't want to go quite that far out so if we zoom in i could perhaps drag in fact let's cancel that can i try and pick there we go i can move it oops <laughs> that was an accident. You see my point though. Oh, and I've accidentally got rid of everything. Um, where do we stand now? So if I go bring the uh, keyboard down, if I click on the root marker here, it's going to show me the root. Ah, yeah, I see. So I can edit this quite easily by taking out, I believe it is that, and I can remove that from root. Just remove all these from root. And it has put me onto uh, EGC4, so I can remove that as well. Now, because I made the mistake there, what I can do is I can quickly just load up the uh, previous route or one that I've already saved. Ah, here we go. Now, if we go to here, we can load up one of the, uh, the routes that we've done previously, one I made earlier. Click on that. And there we go, we've got the route back. So, in order to save it, if you did create a route, you just click this save button, this star button here. It's quite easy to uh, to save. And then you have all your routes in the recents and in your favorites. Another little um, toggle is the artificial horizon. However, that is unfortunately a, a paid for um, subscription service. But I think that would be quite useful because it could give you the map and your artificial horizon and flight information all in, in one screen. But I have not paid for that, unfortunately. So we'll close that off. You can toggle your flight plan on and off like this. You can go to your nav log to show you different um, information about the different routes that you're taking and close that off there. Now, one of the things you can do is click on the airfield and then it brings up this information pane. Now this is exactly the same if you open it in full screen. Another way to get to it is to go back to maps and then go to airports and then you've opened up, you've got exactly that information again on the information pane. Um, you then can choose your favorite airports or your recent airports from the left hand side here. If we choose Leeds Bradford, we have some basic information about it, the elevation, the circuit height, and the type of fuel that is uh, served at that airport. Your different radio frequencies that you need for ATIS and clearance and the tower, etc. Another subscription service is to click on that and to see the airfield or airport in 3D as sort of a Google Maps view, which could be very useful. You can then go to taxiways and that is going to show you the airport card and that's really cool what happens is once you set up your airfield destination once you land the app knows you've landed and on the ground and it closes down the map and brings up the card for you straight away so that's really convenient you have your frequencies again 
on this tab here, you've got weather information, including you know your wind, wind direction, temperature, dew point, etc. You also have your runway information. You have procedures, and then you can open up the airport diagrams from here. Approach procedures and things like that, and it's going to show you the different cards. So you can get to your procedures really easily. Got any relevant NOTAMs, it's going to tell you. And uh, airport information, again on these cards here. And what happens is all these cards, they're actually under the documents and the charts, sorry, the charts tab. So we click charts. This is where you can actually save your plates and then you can add, um, you can add them through here and just search by the airport and add them in. Or you can actually look at... Uh, can drop down by different binders as well. So you can have a binder full of certain charts and plates and you can have, um, so you can ca actually categorize them. Now you can pull those up through the airport on the airport's information under the procedures and relevant, uh, relevant tabs, or you can uh, just go to your, to your charts and look at different plates and things like that. Now, I'm not too aware of the doc documents, but um, I have looked at the images and this is where you can get some different surface to different flight level weather information and pressures and uh, rainfall, which is quite handy to have at your fingertips between 12 hours, 18 hours, 24 hours, etc. Then you have a scratch pad, uh, so you don't have to take a piece of paper with you. You can actually decide that you want to uh, write in. Something like, uh, hello, uh, your time of departure or whatever relevant information. You can click add to add different new flight, um, new scratch pad, sorry. And you can actually have it as a type in or a grid or a draw or anything like that. You can clear it. And then in the more, that's basically your settings and under here, You've got a, uh, a logbook. This is where you can put your way to balance. You can actually put your information about your aircraft in. Just quickly show you some of the information that you can put in about your aircraft. Then um, one really useful thing that you can put in is the devices. If you play X-Plane or any kind of simulator, oh, I know it at least works for X-Plane. I'm not sure about um, the other simulators, although I'd be surprised if it doesn't work for things like PEP3D. But for X-Plane for sure, and I have a video about how to do this, you can go to devices, connect it to your X-Plane simulator, and then what it's going to do is load up your position on the on the uh, chart as if you were there in real life so you can actually test out for flight uh, simulate your flight and then use for flight um, as you would do as if you were really flying and then that gives you the ability to learn about for flight whilst uh, in the comfort and safety of using your own simulator being able to pause the simulator have a look at for flight test it out and stuff and this preps you basically for any type of flight that you're going to do and allows you to learn how to use it on the move um, without actually having to jump in and, and go flying you can actually simulate the whole experience i think that's absolutely incredible so that is basically uh, the big crash course on Four Flight. That's a whole bunch of useful features that should hopefully help you get going. I hope you like the video. I hope you find it useful. I think this app's amazing. Download it. I can't believe how much you get for free. If you like the video, give it a thumbs up. And if you want to see more videos like this, just hit subscribe. Thanks for watching. I've been Pilot Mike. Goodbye.